Hey, Nikki. Hey, Selena. And hello, everyone. Welcome to Sweet Tea and TV. Hey, y'all. <sighs> so, I was looking ahead to see when this episode would officially come out. Oh, uh-huh. And it's going to come out on March 20th. Do you know what March 20th is? I didn't. First day of spring? Uh, I think it's March 21st. Oh. But, but maybe. I don't know. I'll let you Google that. Uh, March 20th is the International Day of Happiness. Also known as the first day of spring. <laughs> well, you make a good point. Uh, <laughs> it does start on March 20th. Oh, it does? Mm-hmm. Oh, so many things. Okay, well, we're going to talk about the International this Day year, of Happiness. This year it is. Okay, sometimes it's the 21st? I think that's right. Okay. That's Which right. would explain why I told Carolina the other day that the 21st was the first day of spring, and then she asked Alexa, and Alexa disagreed with me. Oh, really? I'm going to have to is spend a little Alexa more time on that. Is Alexa dead now? She didn't survive that one. Oh, yeah. She got a little mouthy. Alexa's outside. <laughs> I'm just kidding. International Day of Happiness. International Day of Happiness. Look at you. Get us back on track. <laughs> Could have gone anywhere. So I was like, oh, yay. But I found a CNN I feel article. way more happy about that than you do. It's just like there's a day for everything. It's like, a lo- if there's going to be one, there should be one for that. That would be nice, right? Um, but I found a CNN article about the world's happiest countries for 2022. The 2023, it's too early to say. It's too, too, it's way too, too early. early. Um, but I wanted to know, do you have any guesses which country ranked the happiest in the world? Is it Norway? I thought you were going to say United States. <laughs> no, we're like, I don't, I don't even know how many countries there are in the world, but like we're at okay. the bottom of the list. Oh, you think so? I do. Huh. Um, so you said Norway? Yeah. It is in the top 10. Okay. Okay. The Netherlands? Uh, it is also in the top 10. Japan? No. Uh, that's the only countries I know. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Finland. Oh, what did I say? I said Norway. Mm, what I was going to say is like the duchy countries. They seem very happy. Is Finland the one where they leave the babies outside in their strollers to sleep? That I country's happy. I don't I don't know that story. Mm. Um, I didn't know which way that story was going either. I was like, is this happy? It's like, but they leave the babies outside to be they, eaten by the wolves. They what? will no. They will literally go into a restaurant and and I've seen this validated on TikTok like 17 times. So I feel good about the information. Sure. Um, it, it's tradition that they'll have them in the stroller and leave the babies outside while they go in and have dinner. And then they come back out and get them. And it's something and about like there. building their immune systems. And people are like, why doesn't anybody steal the babies? And they're like, because we're not monsters. We don't steal babies in our country. Why would you steal a baby? I've got like lots of reasons. I mean, first of all, it's really wrong. And that's a terrible thing to do. But like also you're stealing a responsibility. How does that make any sense? Scandinavians is really what it is. Maybe Norway. That's Nikki moving on. All those those countries sort of. um, How's this now? um, I think (laughs) think of them in a similar bucket. (laughs) It's a similar bucket. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, no, no, no. I get it. I get it. I don't want to be given a test, okay? I've <laughs> right. got the answers in front of me. So Finland, this is the fifth year in a row that they've ranked number one. So good what I'm saying them. is, it's okay, we had opposite thoughts. You said good for them. I said it's time to move. I'm ha- Yeah, well, I mean, it could be the same. Good for what them. Let's move. move to the happiest country in the world? And you were and the one unhappy person. The spot. Oh. It dropped down, like, once you moved there. That feels like it might happen to me. Anyways, so... Do you want to hear the top 10? Yes, please. Okay. So number two is Denmark. Number three is Iceland. Number four is Switzerland. Number five is... They're all in that same place. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. That's crazy. Um, Number five... You're very smart. Number five is Netherlands. Number six is Luxembourg. Seven, Sweden. Eight, Norway. Nine, Israel. Ten, New Zealand. Israel? New Zealand doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Israel. Yep. So cool. You thought the U.S. fell to the very bottom of the list. I think I've at least told you that's not the case. But you, you say we're number to... eleven. I swear, I'm going to come across this table. Okay, well that would seem kind of unfair to me. <laughs> <laughs> Since you invented this list, Selena. <laughs> Good job, idiot. Where are we? Where are we on the list? You want to take? You want? You don't. I already guess. guessed. Fifty. Yeah. yeah. It was not I mean, how many countries, countries are there? I don't know. I don't know. I forget. I think it's out of fifty, maybe a hundred. Anyways, thirty-two. 16. Okay. <gasps> 16, that's not bad. 16 top half 20. of 32. Anything to make yourself right, right? <laughs> okay. 16. Yeah. The American not, dream. Not bad. I think we're above, I don't have the list open right now, but I think we're above um, Britain, which I didn't expect. Really? And France, I think. Really? 
Yeah, I was telling you what. I'm just telling you what the report says. And so some of the measures, because I didn't want to just drop that and people be like, but why? So? What's the secret? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> like, what's the secret? <laughs> Tell me more. Is it leaving your baby outside? <laughs> so this is some of the measures that the report uses to explain these findings. Um, healthy life expectancy, GDP per capita, social support in times of trouble, low corruption and high social trust, generosity in a community where people look after each other, and freedom to make key life decisions. Wow, that's lovely. That is so nice, isn't it? Uh, assuming all those are Happy. good indicators. Yes. Yeah. This is more if you're at the bottom, that's not great. That's not the best. So that's it. Oh, well. Happy. Uh, so for all of our listeners, happy day of happiness. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Mm. I was going to use that international flair to parlay us into this week's episode. But you went back to International Happy Day, which is how it started. I thought you picked this segment because you're talking about other countries. And Julia and you Suzanne go to other countries. <laughs> Speaking of other countries. <laughs> That's a great transition. I was so glad you picked that to open the episode. Yes. Also, happy International Happy Day. Uh <laughs> This week is Designing Women Season 4, Episode 9, Julia and Suzanne's Big Adventure. Uh, IMDb this week says, Julia and Suzanne. I think Selena just messes with me picking out these descriptions for the, for the Who for knows? The show. It's 5 o'clock in the morning when I'm doing it. <laughs> the fact that it's not just three scribbles on a screen is amazing. <laughs> Julia and Suzanne experience a series of mishaps on a trip to Japan to visit their mother and to pick up Suzanne's new car. Meanwhile, Anthony and Mary Jo cast votes in a call-in poll unaware that each call costs money this one aired november 27th 1989 and we're calling this one <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> it was written by pam norris and directed by Dwayne hickman can i stop you real quick yes please i guess i could bring this up in references but i'm uh -oh. honestly not sure I'll good remember. lord well that name big adventure are they is that a peewee herman reference oh you might be right peewee's big adventure when did yeah. that movie come out so 1988 let's see Let's see. Let's do a quick... Are we going to find out Pam Norris worked on that? Oh, sorry. 85. Oh, okay. But beforehand, so... There are other know. kinds of big adventures, too. If anybody happens Good to question. know anything about how this might be a reference. Anyways, it just struck me um, when you said it in the last episode when you were introducing that this is uh, what we're going to cover this week. I was like, wait a second. I wonder if this is a play on Easy wheezy. Be yep. Be wee wheezy. Well, other than that, what general reactions did you have? Look at that. Um, so it was a good idea to give these two their own episode. And honestly, I'm a little surprised. Wait, which two? Julia and Suzanne? So I want to say yes. Okay. But I was specifically thinking about Julia and Suzanne. Because okay. it's more their episode. Yeah. Um, and um, I'm surprised it took this long, honestly. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. You trying to think back to whether or not they'd had a pair up before like this? Uh, I don't know. I was just trying to fill the silence. <laughs> I don't know. I just was thinking. Okay. <laughs> Perfect time. <laughs> you want us to give you a minute? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I was just thinking. And thanks for coming to our last podcast episode. <laughs> I, I'm just reflective is all. Uh, I thought this episode was just a delight. It's just hi hijinks. We've had three episodes in a row of hijinks, which is my personal brand of enjoyment and humor. Uh, it isn't always mine, but I've really enjoyed it in this run. Yeah. Um, it's been a good run. It's been a good, been a good run. run. Let's see how it goes. Um, I wanted to say that I had about a million thoughts about Suzanne in this one, but here are a few main things I wanted to share She's with wonderful. you. She's wonderful. Especially as our resident Suzanne defender. Um... Is it just me, or did they really ratchet up everything with her in this episode? At the beginning, especially, on the plane. I oh, found mm -hmm. her to be louder, ruder, and more obnoxious than she's ever been in that very beginning scene. Yeah. And then her character, this I didn't think really matched up very well for me. So her character is supposed to be well-traveled. Yes. But she's acting like she's never left home before or been on a plane before. Mm -hmm. And like she doesn't know anything about the world. She called Japan a developing nation. Um, I will counter my own argument, though, with the fact that everything we hear about is pretty Eurocentric or like the Caribbean. So um, by show canon. But like still, it doesn't track for me. And I enjoyed her later on. As soon as we get off the plane, she's. I delightful, but on the plane, I was like, this is too much. 
So I think that I had, I won't say forg- forgiven it because it, I mean, she was, she was really inappropriate in a lot of ways, but I think I had rationalized it maybe as she, she even says like she's in coach and I feel like she's used to first class right. and that is a total, I've been in first class one time in my life on my honeymoon and it is a very different experience and those people are very different. And I imagine if you travel a lot and you usually travel first class, you are going to have really bad manners in front of all the rest of the cattle, which I think is how she identifies people. Mm, okay. But you're right. She was, she wasn't, she it wasn't was, It was a lot. I mean, obviously. But it made me. I, LBT is obviously trying to tell us something, right? And I think she is trying to tell us a little bit about, um, she, I think it was like a what not to do. Yeah. Like, we'll do this. Yeah. We're going to travel the world. So, yeah. um, but I thought she, I loved her afterwards. Yeah. Just great. Um, even though she was still mean, it was like a, a, a Suzanne mean that I could handle. Yeah. Um, and not borderline, borderlining. I mean, some of it was just flat out racist. Yeah. So, um, stray observations. Were you ready for those? Or you got more generals? I am ready. Okay. Uh, well, it, it, it's worth noting, yeah. which was one of my general reactions. This is just, an, and they reference this in the show, another notch in our belt of terrible trips for this group of people. Okay. That's oh, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just always terrible Sorry, trips. you lost me at the notch. The belt, notch of the belt. Sorry, yeah. I should have picked a different one. 20 minute trip to the DMV. Is that a thing? That's what Charlene said it was going to be. Well, I'm glad you said that because I think that there were some timing snafus in this one all around. So um, I think that's probably uh, eh, not true. And then, for, but it is Charlene. Yeah. And she's optimistic. That's true. So um, four days for an international trip. I'm just going to say Ugh. don't do that. I can't imagine. That means they'll basically have a day and a half, maybe not traveling. I checked it. It takes 14 hours to get to Tokyo from Atlanta and that's on a direct flight, which I would imagine they take. I can't, Mm -hmm. I can't imagine they would go in coach and and layover. layover, Right. Um, and, uh, so I just, hmm. so that was weird for me. And then also I think even maybe the premise of what they did with going to get the car. So that is a real thing that people do. Okay. I mean, I don't know how the pandemic has hit that. I would imagine not well, but it's, um, I know from, from Casey and his work that like, you know, people would go to Germany and they would go pick up their car over there, go Mm -hmm. see it in the factory. They made like a whole thing out of it. It was for really special elite clientele. Mm -hmm. These people are not doing this for a deal. Mm -hmm. They're doing it because it's like this elaborate bucket list kind of thing. Right. And then they chip it back over. And right. so that part was real. So I just thought that was a little surprising. I mean, I think they kind of made it work with some glue and tape there, but it, it was a little bit of a stretch. I was so confused about how it could possibly be cheaper to fly to Japan, stay in Japan, although they said they're staying with their mother or mother's friend or whatever. Um, stay in Japan, buy a car, ship the car back to the U.S. and fly back to the U.S. How is that cheaper than just buying a car? Speaking of money things, <laughs> <laughs> nice trend. Anthony and Mary Jo spent three hundred and fifty dollars on prank calls. Today that would be eight hundred and twenty-six. Oh gosh! I just want to say that three hundred and fifty would be bad. Yeah. I would be really upset about that. Eight hundred and twenty-six. I probably have to go to at least one therapy session. When Kyle and I were in college and dating, we were on two different cell phone plans, and it was back when you got charged for every text message, and I got charged for minutes if I didn't call him after eight p.m. And I'm unlikely to call a human being after 8 p.m., even at 21 years old. (laughs) And um, so I got my first cell phone bill that was probably almost $300 after we started dating. And I had to change cell phone providers because I couldn't afford that. It must be love. love, love. I don't remember. He owes me that money. Um, Speaking of prank calls and Anthony and Mary Jo's time together. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, let me ask. Do you have any other strays? <laughs> I don't want to cut you off at the knees. Go ahead. Some of mine might come up with yours. Well, don't be so sure because someone might be trying to transition right now right. badly. Carry on. Uh, so speaking of prank calls, Mary Jo <laughs> reminisces about something near and dear to my heart, snow days. Could we <laughs> so subtly, Selena sidebar about that? Sure. It's a sidebar, Selena sidebar. She's got a keyboard looking for a reward by digging deep in the obscure, taking us on a detour. What you got, Selena? In Selena sidebar. (laughs) 
really waiting that one out. It's the last well, one. So there's just a, a lot of backbeat. You know, I was like, backbeat. I thought you said back meat. <laughs> oh, maybe. I don't know. I just got off a cruise. It's really at the trough there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, that was a terrible transition, and I apologize for that. Oh, yeah. Anyways, I, I thought like it would be fun to revisit. First, Mary Jo's snow day, mm-hmm. and then um, we could talk a little bit about, like, our snow days. Uh, so here's okay. what Mary Jo says about hers. Uh, this is directly from the episode. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I'm having such a good time. It reminds me of snow days. You remember snow days. You know, you wake up in the morning, there'd be a couple of inches of snow on the ground, and while Mama was fixing breakfast, we'd sit around listening to the radios to see which schools were closed and which schools were going to be open, and we'd sit there and we'd just pray and pray. Oh, please, oh, please, please, say Franklin Elementary. And then the radio would say, and Franklin Elementary. And then we would just all roll around on the floor in our pajamas going, yes, yes, yes. And then what would you do? Well, then we'd spend about 45 minutes getting into our snow clothes, and then we'd go outside for about 10 minutes, and it'd be too cold. So we'd come back in, have some hot chocolate, watch TV, and make prank phone calls. So, Nikki, hearing that, does that sound on par with any of your snow day experiences? Yes, in the sense that we would sit and watch the news Mm -hmm. and beg for our school Mm -hmm. to be listed, and it would never be Gwinnett County Schools. And then, <laughs> then you go to school. <laughs> then we go to school. But on the rare occasion that it was our school that was out, that part about playing in the snow for about 15, 20 minutes, as a Southerner, it, it doesn't get more true than that. So, speaking of being a Southerner, like I think that's what why this hits differently mm-hmm. um, is because, like, you know, the South versus like Chicago or something Mm -hmm. or really anywhere where it snows a lot, not because other parts of the country don't have to stay home. If it's like really inclement weather, obviously they do, but Mm -hmm. just for us in general, snow is so rare Mm -hmm. that it's like a unicorn occasion for us. For sure. Like, unless you live in the mountains or something. Yeah. So I got curious. I'm like, I maybe could have just dialed a friend um, (laughs) about this, but it was five o'clock in the morning. No one's (laughs) answering their phone. No one's answering the phone. Um, And I got curious whether snow days are even a thing anymore especially oh now they do digital learning remote, days yeah all this stuff so according to ed week research center survey from november 2020 39 percent of principals and district leaders said their district had converted snow days to remote learning days oh dang and another 32 percent said their districts were considering the change then there are some they've just done away with them all together you know new york city green bay I hear it snows there. Um, Salem, Massachusetts, and then other districts like D.C., well, they haven't uh, because of concerns about access to technology, which yeah. makes a lot of sense. Kind of wish some of these other places would think about that. That's okay. Um, still others like Northfield, Minnesota, are offering more of a hybrid approach. So they'll do one traditional snow day, and then after that they go ahead, if the weather is still bad, and they switch to e-learning. Oh, I like that idea. I think that's a really it nice It acknowledges approach. childhood. Right, because personally I think snow days are, are really special um, and should be preserved. It's like a rite of passage, like senior skip day. Oh. Like senior skip day. <laughs> like senior skip day. She's skipping in her head. I don't know what's One happening. day I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you skip I don't know work. what's happening. <laughs> I know you didn't do senior skip day. What's happening? <sighs> Meanwhile, I skipped every Thursday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. We need that tradition. We're going to send you back to high school. That sounds terrible. Um, so tell me, Nikki, do you have any standout snow day memories that you'd want to talk about? School age snow day. The one that popped to mind for me, and I had to double check this because I was not in Atlanta for the great blizzard of 1994 or whatever. Yeah, I, was I was wondering. in North Carolina. Okay. Uh-huh. And I was too, I'm kind of too young to remember it. Um I don't have a lot of memories before I was like 14 years old. I can't explain it. Um, But I do remember sledding and stuff. But I just don't really remember that being a big blizzard or anything, Mm -hmm. although I know it was. Uh, But in 2000, we had another mass weather event. Mm -hmm. In my home, it set out our power for like five days. Oh, fun. So (laughs) in my mind, when it gets cold and snow is in the forecast, I get worried about losing power because for me, a lot of my snow day or like bad memory weathers, bad weather memories are tied to having no power. 
So the snow of 2000, my brother and um, stepdad had driven up to North Georgia to go snowboarding. They got stranded because the roads were so icy. So me, my mom, and my sister were at home with no power for like three days until they could like muscle their way home. Um, we didn't have school and because we didn't have power. We didn't what in, we didn't have a computer really to do remote learning or whatever and infrastructure. Um, we didn't do that. We literally sat in my mom's room and just like tried to generate heat from our bodies for one another. We had like a propane stove and so every now and I then could help you revisit <laughs> this memory. <laughs> there was no TV when I, I wanted to take a bath cause I just had to get away from my family cause I was 15, 15, 14, 15. Yeah. And I had to get away from my family. So we had to heat up water in a pan. I think we had a gas stove. So we had to heat it up on the gas stove and then take it and pour it in the bathtub and do that like 20 times to get a lukewarm bath to be away from everybody. So that's my strongest snow day memory. Tell me about your wonderful childhood. Oh, man. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds delightful. Um, so this actually wound up being a tough exercise for me, too, because well, I'm old. So these memories, especially as a little kid, are much hazier. Yeah. I was around for the blizzard of 93 all the way back in the last century. Um, in fact, this is kind of crazy, but the day this airs will be March 13th. Oh, no. The day this airs will be March 20th. The the last episode, when this airs, (laughs) that coming a week ago. Nice try. Yeah. This will be exactly 30 years ago this year. Holy moly, you're old. I mean, we're the same age. Oh, man. So I was too young to remember the specifics, but uh, like the specifics of the storm. I do have memories from the blizzard, but I... I wasn't like following the weather channel. Right. Uh, So let's see. We wouldn't have been quite eight yet, but I looked it up and wind chills reached negative 30. Good Lord. Wind sustained at 40 plus miles per hour. Hundreds of thousands of people lost power for days everywhere from Atlanta to Athens and south of Atlanta. That's where I was. And then there were three to nine inches of snow recorded. I think they're talking about in the main areas not the main areas, but like the middle part of the state. Mm-hmm. Um, but places in North Georgia were reporting 35 inches, and the northern suburbs got about a foot of snow. We'll link to an AJC article from last year reflecting on the storm um, because it's like a, I don't know, like it's just, it's a interesting revisit to what happened at the time and how that was another time where snow really crippled the state. So I have, pretty fond memories of this <laughs> i probably do too pre well, like middle 2000, school thousand um but in 93 so yeah. yeah i mean we were actually living with my grandparents at the time and um well my grandmother wasn't working anymore but my grandfather um uh, my peep and my mom they both had to be home from work and i couldn't go to school so we were all there together and fortunately this is one of the times it was okay um so we were really lucky to have power and i do remember being uh i do remember all the power outages from that time being a huge issue so we actually had a few neighbors and their kids staying with us oh that's fun and so we were like unless you hated them no it was it was great actually we played games and i just felt terrible telling this now after your story i'm sorry Um, you should have gone first i'm so sorry um we played games and i seem to remember my grandma making her delicious beef vegetable soup it's really good and um i don't know it's just an interesting type of camaraderie i i can't help but wonder if it like like something in our brains that's a little bit more primal like a survival something but like also like around the campfire kind of whatever um so yeah yeah. don't get me wrong like um so we had some bad weather as an adult so like snowpocalypse 2014 which i think maybe you were just referencing yeah uh, crippling atlanta like we had a driveway kind of like yours it's on an incline and there was this much and i'm I'm making like maybe an inch an inch and a half of ice on it and i know that because i tried to go out and chip the ice off so we could go to the grocery store to get some groceries because we were young and didn't properly plan for the weather so we needed to go to the grocery store and i was trying to chip the ice off the driveway Which sounds terrible, but the rest of the experience was really fun for us because in that house, we never lost power. Mm -hmm. So knowing we didn't really, um, I think we did have to work. We worked remotely. That was one of the first times I've ever professionally worked remotely, but it didn't feel like work because Kyle and I were in the same like office space together and just sort of having fun and 
being kids. And then we went outside with Jackson and played in the snow. And then since I've had my kids, we've had at least one snow day and a couple of like bad rainy weather days where the power went out and we, we find ways to make it fun. So yeah, I mean, the idea of being stuck at home is glorious to me. Yeah. We did have to drive the hurricane we had a couple years ago. We had to go to my parents' house because we were, I was nine months pregnant and we were on day two of no power and I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah, well, that's tough. That was hard. It was hot. <laughs> it was yeah, September that's, for that's that no one. Good. Yeah, that's <laughs> no good. Yeah. But it good. does get when the um, heat goes out for winter because if, if it's cold enough for us to have snow down here, it's cold, it's cold and our yeah. houses are not built for that. So if you lose power, you get cold yeah in georgia it's barely made for like 40s or 50s Mm -hmm. i'll you know because it feels like at that temperature i can walk outside sometimes and be like dear heaven and stars is it warmer out here than in the house yep um so we might just need some insulation it's okay (laughs) so in in high school i remember being stuck at two different friends houses uh like just it's hard for me to remember the years now. I guess one is the two thousand time frame. I can't really remember, but it was like the same neighborhood, but two different times. I do specifically remember these these friends. Their parents had money, so I want to be clear that this was not my neighborhood. Um, but one time we went sledding on the golf course that was in their neighborhood. Oh, cool! And that was like a ton of fun because obviously it's really hilly, so it's mm-hmm. like perfect for that. And then the details on the second time were a little fuzzy. That's probably because it was the earlier iteration. Um, you guys might have gotten hit. I wonder if this is two thousand. I think y'all might have gotten hit worse than we did because, you know, yeah, of Atlanta geography. <laughs> geography is fun. Um, but it feels like maybe Henry County overshot and they closed us down. But <laughs> really didn't need to That's be the dream. Down. Yes. So it was snowy. So we still got to enjoy the snows, but the roads were actually okay. All of our friends just wound up getting together instead. And I remember being in the hot tub a lot. And then also daring one of our friends to do a, a naked snow angel, which she did. <laughs> I feel like this is the story you should feel bad telling me. I was 15, stuck in a small room with my mom and sister, Honey, boiling water I so I could take a if bath. If I could come get you, I would have. I don't, like, we didn't know each other, but I would have invited you to the hot tub. I would have been like, bring your sister and your mom. <laughs> They'll survive. They're fine. Come to the hot tub. You're right. This is the one. But I don't actually know it's 2000. I told you. I can't really remember the sure, years. Sure. Right. I can't remember yeah. the years. But all I'm saying all is. All your fun blurs together. Yeah, all my fun. All my, <laughs> hey, trust me. There was trauma. <laughs> there was trauma in between the fun. Um, but kids need this. That's my. For I don't sure. know about the naked snow angels. Yeah, that but part. Too. They do need this bonding time. They need this kind of fun. Because let me tell you something you already know. <laughs> But in case you don't know and you're listening, these moments, they get few and far between the bill paying and the nine to five and all of that. So I say school systems, districts, hear me now. Let them have some fun. You give those kids a break because they won't have it forever and you need it. It's like, it's a type of skills building, you know. I was reading an article about that recently. Um, This idea that for all the learning you do in school, if you're not like emotionally intelligent and you're not like socially intelligent, you're not going to survive Yeah, because we're a social and emotional society. That's right. That's how you connect with people. Absolutely. So it is, it is a part. She's right. Of the Gwinnett sc- County Schools. Yeah. Yeah. Gwinnett, you were apparently really <laughs> difficult on people down in Henry County. So we were scared. I need you to ask Casey um, if he remembers it the same way I do. Yeah. I remember you talking about this before. I'll have to ask him. Uh, they were awful. Yeah. I we would literally, know. it would be like every school system. And then you get to Gwinnett and you're like, oh, it's coming. It's well, coming. They like me. Gilmer. So he was probably just like skipping school. He's like, I don't know. I just oh, okay. Yeah. Bad kids, Nikki. <laughs> we were bad kids. Um, so, uh, besides snow days and reminiscing, what did you like about this episode? Hi, okay. Jinx. <laughs> yeah. And the script writing, again, was really good in this one. Uh, Charlene at the DMV was one of my favorites when she said, most of the people down here are real cranky. They don't know how the department works. They don't know which way... Which line goes where? And they just want to get out of here. She's like, well, why don't you just ask for an employee? And she's like, those are the employees. I thought that was so good. (laughs) That was so good. I also Uh, thought it was, I I liked after a string, and you mentioned this a minute ago, of like outright racist things that Suzanne was saying. And um, 
like the subtle in insinuations and Julia is just like judging her so hard. And then Julia of all people, Julia, the ally had some accidental racism on the plane when she was like, just speak to him in Japanese. Here's what you say. Yeah. I thought that was really funny. Yeah. Um, I, I do. You have to give it to the writers of the show. Now LBT and Pam Norris, and I'll never be able to keep up with who. But like the fact that they like they they do equally at least at least try to equally share it around. Yeah, where people get to learn the lessons. Um, I liked when they're trying to find their seats on the plane, and Julia says, "If history teaches anything, <laughs> mine will be next to a baby who smokes." I um, knew you would love that line. That really resonated. I knew with you me. would love yeah. that. Also, I had to look it up, uh, but. Smoking stopped on airplanes. In 1997. Later. No, uh 2000. It wasn't fully banned until 2000. Isn't that crazy? Could you imagine? It started to happen in 88, which is one of the reasons I'm wondering if it gets referenced. Um, I do remember having lunch with my mom while I was in college at a mm-hmm. restaurant near her work where people still smoked in the restaurant. Sure. They had the smoking section and the, I, that's, I know I've been in smoking restaurants before. That's the clearest, most recent memory I have. So that would have been like the early 2000s. They did not, well, I can tell you, because I worked in restaurants and they didn't, I don't know if it was city of Atlanta or of all of Georgia. That part I don't remember, but it was either January 1, 04 or 05. Smoking and non-smoking sections was just about the dumbest. So stupid. Because you just walk in, that's all you smell. It, I mean, it was, yeah, it was really dumb. Um, and ours was uh, at the steakhouse I worked at. It was only smoking at the bar, but the bar's like in the middle of the restaurant. Right. And you're like, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, but there was like a cigarette machine in there and the whole nine. So I don't know. Um, so I like Sam a lot. Yeah. And the twists in this one um that you're already starting to allude or you already alluded to but you know um they assume he's japanese and he doesn't speak english but he's a self-proclaimed bubba from conyers and then they get their luggage stolen at the airport by three american hippies yeah Uh, i I was glad that they they built it that way and that seemed fair so many i mean so much of the script there was so much of the script there was funny. Like Julia, her broken high heel, and, and again, Dixie Carter's physical humor with that limping. Suzanne making the comment about um, the tickets being in Julia's pocket, and you can thank me for that because you said I was incompetent and I would lose them. <laughs> um, and then at some point, Julia said, when a woman walks on a man's back, she means it. There was just like a lot of very funny comments in there. Yeah. Um, I like the exchange between Sam, Julia, and Suzanne in their cubicle room. Oh. So the lights go out and you, Suzanne, would you please take your hand off my breast? <laughs> Sam, hey, I'm sorry. Not you, Julia. And then Julia goes, Suzanne, I'm tired. I've had it. I need <laughs> some place to rest my hand. And if you've got something to rest it on, I'm going to use it. What did Sam think? What did Sam actually have his hand on? <laughs> I'm was... not really sure. I, I, yeah, I guess that's a fair. Or point. was it on her breast? And she was like, "I'm okay with yours, not hers." <laughs> She's getting it from every. I got angle. really what? stuck on that one. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's fair. Or maybe he just assumed, like, yeah, I don't know, because I'm sure he was like really uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. So Julia's list of people to be punished, <laughs> and also. Based on my most recent trip, I'm going to start incorporating that <laughs> moving forward. I'm coming for you, Fort Lauderdale. Toward That's the end, say. toward the end, she was with the car sales guy. She or the car guy. She was super um, relaxed about it, and she's like, "I'm sorry, I'm going to need your name." Like in the beginning, she was really aggressive, and then she's like, "I'm going to need to write that down." Or when the lady gets in the shower with her, <laughs> and Suzanne, "Don't worry, I got her name. I'll write it on the list." And I just, it was just. It was great. Oh, so funny. Uh, other things or things you didn't like? The only thing I didn't like in this episode, doesn't even feel fair, is that there was an obvious gap with Charlene missing for most of the episode. Oh, yeah, because she's pregnant. But then you made me feel kind of bad that I didn't catch how awful Suzanne was being. She just felt like Suzanne to me. Like a ramped up, I'm traveling and anxious about international travel sort of Suzanne. It's, it's such a sweet read. She's just so anxiety I am a very unpleasant traveler. So... I understand. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> the airport part and the like driving part, I'm very unpleasant about. Yeah. Getting there, being there, being on vacation, love it. Yeah. Love traveling, but I'm a very anxious in the airport. Like I just want to be at the place. Yeah. 
Well, mine's more like there's just so much to keep up with. And then and international travel, especially. Well, the thing is, is like you've got TSA agents, you've yelling got airport at you. staff yelling at you. You've got airline staff. And so they're all doing the same thing moment by moment every day. Right. So they don't understand why you, if you're not like a business traveler, don't understand automatically. And that's really not fair. I understand why they have that mindset. It's very easy. I think we all do it in our jobs. How do you not get this idiot? But like, it's all ramped up by everything else. And obviously post 9-11, I just feel like all airport stuff is so over the top. Well, and not to go down a rabbit hole on that, but what irritates me about TSA is the rules also change from airport to airport. So yeah. they the rules are simple and from clear. Day to day. Exactly. And then they act like you're the crazy one because you don't realize today you don't have to take your laptop out of the backpack. So you're taking it out of the backpack. Leave it in, ma'am. Leave it in, ma'am. Should I change this to things we didn't like yes, about please. the TSA? Please. <laughs> you said, well, what bothers me? Has anyone ever started this sentence and go, let me tell you what I love <laughs> about TSA. I, I mean, I am grateful you. to them and I appreciate their this. service. But like, just don't be an a-hole because your rules are different day to day. I think that's I part of the training. I am not a daily traveler. Yeah. Get off my back. And obviously there are nice TSA agents. Are there? There certainly are. <laughs> it may feel fewer and far between <laughs> depending on your situation. Well, and that's the other part that gets me is this pay to play. Mm -hmm. So if you go through clear or you Which go is what I did recently. And so well, now it's a super have, easy experience. I have pre-check now yeah. because I got tired of dealing with it. But what I'm saying is it is definitely the haves and the have nots. And we're For doing sure. that in travel and we're doing it under the guise of keeping people safe. It's why we're number 16 on the happiness list. <laughs> and that's really messed up. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I've, people in international airports aren't very nice either. Yeah. In fact, that's some of the rougher ones I've had uh, personally. Uh, so my only dislike was I've already talked about, and that's, I didn't think that Suzanne's play up on the plane, on the first plane there made a lot of sense. Um, I didn't think it squared with her personality we've encountered to this part. The selfish part, yes. The loud and graceless part, not so much. Um, so, uh, because we all know that Suzanne is perfect. That's just a fact. She's wonderful. We know it. Uh, do you want to rate the sucker? I do. All right. My rating scale is reincarnation insurance policies. Okay. okay. I'm going to give it five out of five because it was pure silliness. And I would willingly watch this one again and again. And I did, in fact. Oh, I love it. Mine is four out of five sexless menage a trois. <laughs> <laughs> I think we really just, in our two rating skills there, described exactly who we are. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's just another solid episode. I love the pairing of Suzanne and Julia. I love the pairing of Anthony and Mary Jo. I do miss Charlene, but we know what's going on there. Good pacing. The A and the B plots were the right balance. We left Sugar Bakers. It was a good time. It was a good time. Hades sings. Jim and Tammy Faye Baker strike again somewhere in the script. I didn't write down the exact line, but there was a reference. Yep. They also referenced the movie Airport, which I looked up and meant to put something down about it, and I it didn't. It was in the 70s. But yeah. yeah. But dated. You can't change the rules on me, Selena. You said this could be 70s. I mean, you said this could be dated. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sam was also a slacks salesman. You that, don't know any good slacks that salesman? feels dated. That's a good point, even for then, yeah. yeah. And then they kept using the word stewardess. Yeah. Which I think we just generally don't use. Flight attendant. Not a lot. Not a lot. Sometimes I do. And I didn't even fly back when stewardess would have been appropriate. Right. I've just heard it so many times in the lexicon that, like, sometimes I'm like, the steward's a flight attendant. Yeah. I just get it wrong. Yeah. I hear it. I don't, know dogs, I've ever used, I don't know if I've ever accidentally used stewardess before. but Well, you're a better person than I am. Well, we know that's not true. My things were reading a physical paper pamphlet or whatever Charlene is reading at the beginning about a guy – in Florida selling reincarnation insurance. Yeah. So um, going to the DMV in person feels dated these days. You do uh -oh. still have to do it, but they have made a lot of it online process, which mm -hmm. is, that's what I want to hear. And yeah. see. Uh, dial a porn. Oh, that yeah. That feels dated. Play, mm -hmm, paying the phone bill in person. Just paying I wouldn't even know what person. to, where would you even go? 
Did, maybe Kyle and I talked about this recently. My grandmother would literally on the first of every month make her drives around and drop off her checks to all of her different utilities. Mm -hmm. So crazy to me. Yeah. I mean, the time we must save, you know, to watch Netflix. I was going to say to fill with garbage. Uh, yeah, that's right. Southern things. I have two. Uh, one is just another Gone with the Wind reference. And the other is Conyers, Georgia. Uh, I think that's where Sam says he's from. Mm -hmm. uh, the subtitle script website that we read, subslikescripts.com, um, said he said Commerce, Georgia. But I'm pretty sure he said Conyers. Both Commerce. are real places in Georgia. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but Henry Cho, who played Sam, is actually from Knoxville, Tennessee. Yep, sure is. I thought he looked really familiar, like I was going to look at his filmography and see him in a bunch of stuff I knew, but I, I didn't. You didn't? Mm -mm. He seems like he should be someone we know. know he I, seems charming and delightful. I'd watch him in things. I know. I really liked him a lot. Uh, Suzanne says she won't be walking around in her stocking feet. That doesn't just sound Southern. It sounds colonial. <laughs> like, I just thought that was really interesting. Uh, <laughs> Sam referring to himself as a Bubba. You know, that sounds pretty Southern. And I think you got the rest of mine. What about references we need to talk about? I'm starting to feel self-conscious. I never have anything in this category. It's okay. I'll go I got you. Good I got you. I thought it was weird that Suzanne said something like, I'm just going to have to get me some of those little wheels after she comes through the door with all of her luggage, luggage. sans wheels. And I was like, why don't you have wheels? So I looked it up. It turns out the bags that we're used to, that are like roller boards is what those are called, weren't invented until 1987 by a Northwest pilot. Uh, I use this term loosely. Fun fact, Northwest is who my grandfather worked for before they got bought out by Delta. That's Someone fun. else had, um, I come from an airline family. So like anytime airline stuff comes up, it is both like, oh, I've heard this 400 times before at a family dinner and like also, oh God, do I have to hear this again? But someone else had put wheels on bags previously to this Northwest pilot. And like sometime back in the 60s or something. But this is crazy. So, and they got a patent for it, but it didn't really take off in quite the same way. They were four wheel models. So they towed them around flat. Like a wheel on each. Doesn't that seem cumbersome and unhelpful? That's like, why they didn't take off. That's why they didn't take off. <laughs> I mean, not to like, I mean, that guy had to do that, I think, for someone else to go to two wheels. Like I'm 20 just, years later? Yes. <laughs> no one was like, there's some promise in this. Let's I, further refine. I don't know. As a not inventor, what do I care? I mean, what do I matter? Well, I read this whole thing too. Um, I hope I remember this correctly, but like people were also resistant to it because um, I think it was seen as like kind of being weak. Like, you couldn't carry around your own bags. That was part of it. And then, like, the other part is most places used to have porters. And that was such a big deal. Nobody ever had to carry their own bags. Right. And so I think a lot of that becoming necessary came as, like, flight prices went down and more normal people like us were able to mm. fly. And mm. then you have people who had to carry their own bags and suddenly there was more of a need for wills. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. It was just, it's just me guys. I find it interesting. I wish sometimes y'all could see Nikki's face. <laughs> Mary Jo notes only 45% <laughs> voted in the last presidential election. I cut that one from my strays earlier. Oh, did you? What did you find? So according to the U S census bureau. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't look at to see if that was true or not. Oh. I just looked to see how many came out in the last election. I remember it being really high, um, but the U.S. Census Bureau unsurprisingly found that 2020 was the highest voter turnout in the 21st century, with 66.8% of citizens 18 or older voting in the election. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't fact check. Oops. Wikipedia had some 1988 election data that showed the number was 53% versus the 45 she mentioned. Come on, Mary. Joe. I know. Um, Pam Norris, dude. But, I also wonder if yeah. they adjust those numbers over time. Like if they continue to refine. I don't know. It feels like the election numbers change for quite some time after the election. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. Well, here's my last reference. Okie dokie. Um, I think that's a good reason, though. That's a good reasoning. Uh, my very last one is like. Julia says something on the plane. She's like wanting to know the age of the plane, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, why is she asking this? So I just phoned a dad, mm -hmm. my dad, 
Um, and he said, I can't say for sure when that requirement was made, probably in the mid eighties following aircraft accidents, incidents due, um, due to the first generation jets getting old enough to start having problems, which makes sense by the eighties, they are getting, they would have been getting old. Um, Aloha airlines where the top of the airplane blew off in flight, for example, kind of led to people. Being I don't know what re- regulation you're talking about. Uh, like the age of planes, being, not being able to share it. Or yeah. having to disclose it. Right. That you don't that's what the flight attendant said. She said Julia said something along the lines of like, How old is this plane? And she said, I'm sorry, our policy isn't to disclose that. Okay. So and this is me asking my dad, was that ever a thing? Okay. I'm sorry. I wasn't very clear. Um, so he thinks it was happening around the mid eighties, um, when when that when they were required to disclose. Require okay, got it. Same page now. Whew, really walked back. I was, well, I was very confused because I was like, so they have all these accidents and then the law changes so they don't have to disclose the age of the aircraft oh, anymore. I that see. makes no sense. I see. So he said in the time before that change, the big airlines got new airplanes every 10 years or so. Mm-hmm. Only second tier airlines flew older airplanes. Most passengers don't have any idea of how old an aircraft is. That would have certainly been the case at early airlines, 1930s to 1980s. Then he told me, the thing to remember is that most airlines have airplanes that are 15 to 25 years old, and it isn't unheard to have aircraft that are older. It is, it's really all about the maintenance. Essentially, the aircraft is overhauled every few years and then rebuilt. Like a cruise ship. Uh, there you go. And then he said the date of the manufacturer, in case you're interested, the next time you want to look is normally in the door jam, similar to like Good. that plate on your car. Good. I will stop real quick. Stop everybody behind me and double check that. I would. Yeah. I don't know. I had to read the whole thing because I asked him and I felt really bad. Like I didn't know I was going to get such a detailed answer. And then like you read that and you're like, oh, yes, parent. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> parent meet child, child meet parent. You are really And it was spread over like three text messages. It wasn't. It was all in one. <laughs> really long text message. Um, so thanks, Dad. That was Thank really nice you. to give such a thorough explanation for that. Thank you. So that's all. Okay. Biddy, so, biddy, biddy. <laughs> next episode. Did, did that not go? Uh, did you not get the reference? I get it. Uh, okay. That's all, biddy, biddy, biddy. Biddy, 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 biddy. I wish I could remember that's this all, y'all. song. <laughs> so next episode. Da, 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 da. Season da, 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 da. four, episode 10. <laughs> Man, that's. Just keep it going in the background gently. We'd love everyone to follow along with us and engage. Well, now I need my theme music. Instagram and Facebook at Sweet Tea and TV. TikTok at Sweet Tea Getting Too Loud. At Sweet Tea and TV Pod. Email Sweet Tea TV Pod at gmail.com. And our website is www.sweetteatv.com. There are several ways to support the show. You can tell your family and friends about us, rate or review the podcast wherever you listen. Don't rate us based on that, what you just heard, just on other things. We also have some additional ways to support the show from the Support Us tab of the website. And come back Thursday for extra sugar. What you got this time, Selena? This time, we have something that wasn't right at my fingertips. Hold, please. We're going to talk about fascinating hotels around the world here in the South as well travel tips and we tips (laughs) t-i-p and we may even toss in a story or two and you know what that means nikki what does that mean selena it means one i forgot my cue and number two we'll see you around the bend